שלום, פרקתי ה, בהשם, בהר שי, בהשם בקר קדש, All praises and glories have no be due, especially in the times we're living in. Bought honors and respects to the apostles and others, a great millstone, and to all the brothers out there doing this work in sincerity and truth, rightfully dividing the word of truth, I say, Shalom. All right, back for another lesson. And I'm going to tell this, we have been quickened. All right, and of course, we're going to get into uh, the etymology of words, like we always do. All right. So uh, to give you people further understanding. So without further ado, let's get right into it. We're going to start here in Ephesians 2 and 1. All right. And I say we, that's my title, we have been quickened. As we read here, and you have he quickened. And I say we because we're talking about the elect. Because that's who, you know, Yahweh Shai is coming back for. All right. And that's all over the scriptures, people. I'm not going to take you to all those precepts. I'll simply quote, what is that, um, uh, Matthews 24, 31, okay? And actually, you people could start reading from the 29th verse, all right, and read on down to the 31st verse, but at the 31st verse, you'll read, and he shall send his angels with the sound of a trumpet to gather his elect, okay? All right? His, he has a chosen people, the Israelites, okay? And out of that uh, nation of people, he has an elect. And it all starts with 144,000, 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes. They're all men who are going to be co-heirs to the kingdom, all right, with Yahweh Shai, all right, they're going to be the governing bodies to the kingdom, you understand, and then besides the 144,000, there will be a great multitude that will include women and children, okay, but he's not coming back for all of Israel like he did when he took us out of Egypt, and again, I'm talking to the Negro, Latinos, and Native Americans, plus the, uh, you know, uh, the speckled bird that is out there, all right? Uh, we have Israelites that were scattered into all nations. So we have Israelites uh, that got together with heathen women, and they had children. And so, you know, those children, you know, may have taken on the outer appearance of the heathen mother and that they may speak uh, in that native tongue, Okay, whether they be Japanese, Chinese, even amongst Edomites. Okay, you're going to have Israelite. And it doesn't really matter, people, because we're all going to get the new bodies, starting with the elect, all right, when we're taken up, all right, into the chariots, all right, to meet up in the clouds, which is a metaphor for the chariots, all right, and we shall all be changed within the twinkling of an eye, all right, and that's just to give you the background so you have understanding, all right. So, and you have he quickened, all right, who were dead, yeah, spiritually and mentally dead. Do you understand that, all right? And we're going to get into all that to give you some understanding. So, we were dead in trespasses and sins, okay? Because that's the system that Esau has set up, all right? an anti-Messiah system, a rebellious system, okay? You know, he, he, he wants you to eat pork. He wants you to eat lobster. He wants you to eat shrimp. Do you understand? I mean, and we can get into many, many other things. You understand? I mean, this is a place that, you know, what he allows, what he puts into law, okay, which is adverse to the most Hi, that's what Satan means, adversary. He's adverse to the Lord. He's rebellious, but he wants everybody to be rebellious, including his chosen people, so that you stay in sin, okay? All right, let's get into this word here, quickened, all right? And it's not going to be here. 
right part. What we do is we go back here. All right. I'm going to put in the word quickened. All right. Okay. I'm going to put that in. All right. Now, you know, we got precepts here. But first, we want to get into the meaning of it. All right. Before I give you some precepts on it. All right. Let's see if we can get into the... Uh... All right. What does it say here? This is my comfort in my affliction, for thy word have quickened me. All right. And what is the word? This truth, this wisdom, this knowledge, this understanding of the scriptures. The scriptures, that's the word of the Lord, right? It comes in the volume of the book. All right? You're commanded to read it. Okay? From beginning to end. To come into the understanding of who you are. You Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Because you're not African American. You're not Puerto Rican. You're not Cuban. You're not Dominican. Okay? You're not Ecuadorian, you're not Panamanian, okay? You're not an Indian, okay? You're not you're the tribe of Gad, you're the tribe of Reuben, you're the tribe, uh, you're not Mexican, you're the tribe of Ishakar, all right? You're the tribe of Ephraim, uh, you're the tribe of Judah, the head tribe, okay? The tribe of Benjamin, the tribe of Levi, so on and so forth. You understand? This man put a veil, a covering cap of all people and nations. Who? Esau Edom, the white man, all right? The wicked, all right? That man of sin, the son of perdition, all right? That evil and violent man, okay? The dragon, the old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. And yes, devil is talking about a man. In Pacific, when you understand these scriptures and you break them down, it is talking about Esau, Edom, all right, the white man, all right, so this is my comfort in my affliction, and that's what we're going through right now, we have to go through it, because again, we will not enter into the kingdom, unless what, unless we, we go through affliction, and I'll take us to that in a moment, give me a minute, all right, so this is my comfort in my affliction, for thy word have quickened me. All right? So we want to get into what quickened means, first and foremost here. All right? Strong's age, 2421. Chaya. Chaya. You see, what quickened means, people, to live, to have life, remain alive sustain life, live prosperly. We haven't lived. Our parents before us didn't live. Our grandparents didn't live. Our great-grandparents didn't live. We've, been, we've had, Esau has had his foot on our necks for the past 530 years here in the Americas. Okay? Starting when Columbus came here. All right? Because we were put in, right into captivity. Okay, on to four Spanish ships, shipped back to Seville, Spain. Thus began the Atlantic slave trade in 1492. Okay, and then about 126, 127 years later, they're kidnapping our brothers and sisters out of West Africa. And again, we scattered into all nations, but they went into West Africa. All right, our brothers ran in there. All right, after the fall of Jerusalem. But understand something: if you don't understand history, you don't understand nothing, okay? We were already scattered into all nations, all right? They didn't all run in, all right, the southern tribes into West Africa, and Israelites were already there prior to the fall of Jerusalem, okay? All right. So, again, to live prosperly, live forever, see? Immortality, people. Immortality, because that's what this truth, wisdom, knowledge, understanding leads to. This is the path onto immortality, those new bodies. Okay, salvation. All right? 
All right? So to be quickened, to be alive, to be restored, okay? Health, right? In other words, Yahweh Shai is healing us, okay? To continue in life, remain alive, sustain life, live on, all right? To live prosperly, to be revived, to be quickened. See, from sickness, discouragement, right? Faintness, death, right? And remember, it tells you in Daniel, right, 725, that he would wear out the saints, right? Okay? See? All right? To quicken, revive, refresh, restore life, cause to grow, restore, revive. I believe you people get the point. All right. Hey, what is that word? See, utterance, speech, word, the word of the Most High. You see? All right. See, the word, the saying, right? The promises, the commands. All right. Understand all that? All right, give me a minute. All right, this is Acts 14 and 22. What does it say here, people? All right. It says, confirming the souls of the disciples, all right? And that all starts with the elect of Israelites and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we, right, which would be the elect of Israel, all right, those that have been called, chosen, all right, and again, we're talking about Israelites. We're not talking about any other nation because this has nothing to do with none of the other 17 nations. Okay, it has nothing to do with Edomites, the white man, all right, and his nation, or any of the other 16 heathen nations. It's got nothing to do with them, all right? There's no inclusion, all right? That's the way the Bible reads the word of the Lord, the word of his son. Okay, the word of the Father and the word of his Son. That's the way the scriptures read. Okay, he has a chosen people. All right, and within that people, he has an elect. All right, okay. Romans eleven seven, Israel have not obtained what it's seeking for, but the election have obtained it. All right, okay, the elect. All right, and the rest were blinded. And as you read down Romans 11, 8, the next verse, it tells you that he has put, you know, the, uh, he has closed their eyes and given them, you know, uh, the sleep of slumber. Do you understand? All right. And they're not going to wake up till at the end. All right. When the missiles come. All right. When, when the shit hits the fan. All right. All right. So uh, that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom. See, everybody's going to be tested, all right? Like, you know, it doesn't matter what's going on with Russia, whatever. The missiles are not coming over here till the MOTB, you know, is issued, okay? And they have to crash the system in order to do that, all right? And present you with that MOTB, the Karagma. You understand? All right? All right. We'll end this here. We'll be right back with uh, part two. Shalom.